Welcome to ECLIMU Learning Simplified. In this lesson, we are going to discuss one of the proofs that light travels in a straight line, and that is the pinhole camera. So we are going to discuss how we can form a simple pinhole camera and how we can use it to prove that light travels in a straight line. But simply, the formation of images inside a pinhole camera that is in upside down position is going to help us to prove that light travels in a straight line. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to describe the features of a pinhole camera, describe how images are formed in a pinhole camera, and then state factors that affect the size of the image formed by a pinhole camera, and then finally explain and state the advantages of a pinhole camera over a lens camera. So a pinhole camera is a simple camera with a small aperture. Aperture sometimes we call it a hole, uh, but it has no lens. So this camera is going to take photographs without a lens. And for you to make a simple uh, pinhole camera, then you need a small rectangular box with a pinhole at one end. Pinhole in this case means a hole which will be made by a pin a very small hole which will only allow approximately one ray to pass through it and then the other end has a large rectangular hole which will have a translucent material which will act as a screen on which the images will be formed so if we can draw a very simple a diagram of a pinhole camera or how a pinhole camera looks like then here you will need a small rectangular box. Let's say this is my small rectangular box like that, which has the edges like this one here, this side like that. Then on top here, it will have an edge like that. And then there are some edges which we can't see, so we can draw them like that. So if this is the box, small rectangular box, we have said one end will have a pinhole. Pinhole means a very small hole which is made from a pin. So if I can label this one, this is a pin hole. Then the other end we have said it has a large rectangular box, large rectangular a box or a hole. This is a, a large rectangular hole. And this large rectangular hole has a translucent screen. It has a screen which is made of a translucent material where the images will be formed. Now, we are going to see how to form images using this uh, uh, apparatus which we call a pinhole. But simply, you will put uh, an object on the far end where we have the pinhole, like you can put it here then now you will observe, you will be observing from this end here, this will be your eye. So your work will only be observing the screen as this pinhole will be making the images. So what you want to realize, the light from this uh, object will come into the pinhole and then it will travel to the screen where you can be able to see it on the screen. So how does a pinhole camera forms images. We are going to realize that a pinhole camera will form real images and real images are images that can be formed on the screen. An image which is formed on the screen, it means it's an image which is formed by real rays. An image formed on the screen, it means you can touch it and then real rays means these are rays which you can block and if you block them, the image will not be formed on the screen. So images formed by a pinhole camera as we are going to see later is real and it's formed on the screen and then this image now will be inverted. It will be upside down. Now the, when it, it is an upside down 
it's going to prove to us this is the one that we used to prove that light indeed travel in a straight line for it to form that image inside a pinhole camera. So it's important to note that we have other images which cannot be formed on the screen or images which cannot be formed by, uh, which are formed by virtual rays, then we call them virtual images. And the rays which form virtual images are called virtual rays. Now, if I can draw a diagram to represent how a pinhole camera forms images, if we have our box here, which has a pinhole and a screen at one end, so I'm going to draw the cross-section part of this pinhole camera. So this is the end which had a pinhole, a hole made of a pin or made through by a pin. And then at the back here, we had a large rectangular a hole, which we call a screen. So you will only be observing from this end here. This way is where you position your eye like that. And then now this is your eye. If now we position an object here, let's say we have a nail. We have a nail like that one. Then if you position it here, this nail will produce or the, the nail will reflect two rays. The first ray now from the tip will go into the pinhole like this in a straight line. And it will go to the bottom of that screen. Then another ray from the uh, tail of this nail will come and then it will go to the above the screen or to the top of that screen. And therefore, if you now draw the image which is formed, a ray from the bottom has formed an image or an image at the top of this screen. So the, 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 the tail will be at the top there like that. And then a ray from the tip has formed a tip at the bottom of this one here. Therefore, the tip will be down there. Therefore, in this case, your image will be upside down like that. The tip will be at the bottom, then the tail will be at the top. And then another important thing to note here is that if light was not traveling in a straight line, then it means this image could not be in upside down position. Look at this. If this light was to make corners, then it means it could have traveled like that. When it reaches here, it finds there is a hole, then it will move down to form the tail at the bottom here. Then the light from above could have gone like that. It finds a hole, it makes a corner to the tip, and then it will form an image which is upright like that. But now since light cannot do that, then it means light travels in a straight line, and therefore, that is why that image is in upside down position. So the formation of images in a pinhole camera, which is inverted or upside down, is a proof that light travels in a straight line in such a way that if light comes from the tip of the object, it will move to the bottom of the screen of a pinhole camera. And then light from the tail of the object will be formed on the tip or at the tip of the pin or camera. So this one will be our image now. And this image, if you take a hand and block this race here, the image will not be formed on the screen. Now, if you remove your hand, the image will be formed on the screen. Then it means now these are rear rays. These are rear rays, rays which can be blocked. And then this is a real image. The image is real. It means it's formed on the screen. You can touch it. You can even uh, touch it. Then this one is our object. So it's important to note here that images formed on a, using a pinhole camera are rear and they are upside down. Another important thing we want to note is that they will be diminished or they will always be smaller than the object.
So a pinhole camera can be modified in such a way that it can take photographs. And the first modification that you must do is first is to paint the inner part black. You paint the inner part of the pinhole camera black so that to avoid the reflection of light by these services. So you paint the inner part black, as you can see on the screen. The one that I've drawn, the inner part I've labeled here, you paint the old part of the inner part black. And the reason why you paint black is to avoid or eliminate the reflection of light. Then the second modification you do, instead of using translucent screen, then you now you replace your screen with a photographic film here, this one here, you can see it. You replace this uh, translucent material with a photographic film, a film like that of silver bromide, which can be used to capture photographs when they interact with light. Then another modification that you can do is to cover with a thin black card, like this one we have, have drawn here. This one, you can see this black card here, which we call a shutter. So the function of this shutter will be moving when the image has been focused on the film, then you just uh, move this card down to block the rays from the object. And in the process, the image would register itself on the photographic film. Now, when you are taking photographs using this uh, modified pinhole camera, the exposure time uh, will take or it is not determined or cannot be predicted and because it depends on several factors which you cannot cater when you are using this instrument or when you are modifying this instrument. So some of the factors which on which exposure time depend on is the size of the pinhole, if the pinhole is large or small, then it also depends on the lighting condition in which you are taking the photograph and also exposure time depend on the sensitivity of the film. If you use a film which is more sensitive, then exposure time will be small. And if you use a film which is not, uh, is, which does not sense easily, then it will take more time for uh, an image or a photograph to register on the screen. And then finally, it will depend on the length of the pinhole camera, the length of the camera. If the length is too long, it will take long for the image to be formed. And if the image or the, 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 the length of the camera is short, then it will take the photographs easily and fast. So it's important to know that the modified pinhole camera has a large depth of field or sometimes we call it a large depth of focus. This means an object both near and far will be formed or will form a focused image on the screen and therefore there will be less distortion. Distortion means if you take a photograph the objects behind or uh, beside the object which you are taking the photograph should also be clear. But if you look at a, a lens camera, only the object that you want to take a photograph will be clear. And then the object, any object around it will be distorted. So this pinhole camera does not distort the image. Then it's important again to note that the, 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 the appearance of the image which will be formed on a pinhole camera will greatly depend on the size of the pinhole. If the pinhole is small, it means it will be only two rays which will pass and form an image behind the screen. So here if you have an object like this one, the hole is very small, only two rays will go. And these two rays, when they go, they will form an image which is upside down like that. This is the image. And then this is the object. But now if you vary and you use now a very large hole like that one instead of a very small hole, then it means if you have your object here, more than two rays will pass through this hole. So you will have maybe one ray from that point like that. Then you will have another ray like that because the hole now is very large. And then you will have another ray from here to that point like that and then you will have another ray from here to that point so in this case if you have more than two rays going through the hole 
Remember, image is formed by only two rays. So here it means two images will be formed because four rays have gone. And now when two images are formed, it means they will be on the same screen. They are, therefore, here we will have what we call overlap of images. Now, when images overlap and much light passes through the hole, what will be formed is what we call a blurred image, an image which is out of focus. Now, a blurred image which is formed by overlap of images is bigger and brighter because much of the light will pass into the pinhole. So if you have a large pinhole, a, a brighter image will be formed, which is very big, and it will be blurred. It will not be seen clearly. It will be out of focus. So we have some of the advantages and disadvantages of taking photographs using a pinhole camera over a lens camera. And one of the advantages of a pinhole over a lens camera is that a pinhole camera takes a photograph which does not have distortion. Remember, we said a pinhole camera has a large field of focus. So if it has a large field of focus, it means it cannot bring any distortion. Then the disadvantages of a pinhole camera over a lens camera is that it takes long time for an image to be formed since the amount of light passing through the pinhole is very small. Remember, for an image to be formed, light must pass through the hole into the screen. Now, since the hole is very small, it will take a long time for light to pass and for the image to be focused on the screen. And then that is a disadvantage. Remember, a, a lens camera, you can just take a photo uh, instantly. And then another disadvantage is that it cannot take or it cannot be used to take photographs of moving objects. Since this one depends on light moving to it, and then it will be focused on the screen, then you close the shutter. Then if an object is moving, then it means it will not be focused on the screen. So that marks the end of our lesson today. In the next lesson, we will discuss magnification.